Let's talk about multiplication and division instruction. So this video let's talk about multiplication instruction. We have two kinds of multiplication instruction. The mode is for the unsigned integer multiplication. So the I mode will work on the signed integer multiplication. The first thing we see the mode instruction. So in the 32-bit environment, when we do the mode instruction, they perform unsigned integer. So they can have, according to your multiply operand is, they can work on 8-bit, 16-bit, or 32-bit. So there's instruction format like this. You can see mode instruction only have one operand. So your operand can be register or memory operand. They can be 8-bit, 16-bit, or 32-bit. You can have different operand to multiply, but they all multiply to the specific register. For example, if you try to do the mode from the 8-bit environment, 8-bit operand, so then they were using this value to multiply AL. If you your operand is 16-bit, they were using this value to multiply AX. So then the same thing, 32-bit, they by default they will multiply to the EAX. So you will have the value multiply AX, uh, AL, AX, and EAX, right? So then that's the multiple. So for the mode instruction, the multiple is always AL, AX, and EAX. So your multiplier will be the same size register or memory operand. Then your product, they will be in AX, DX combined with AX, and EDX combined with EAX. Okay, why? Because you need to remember, when we do the multiplication, they kind of the double the digit. Okay, for example, you see if I have in the real life, I have eight times eight. You see eight times eight, 64, right? So that's why one bit times one bit, at the most, they can have two bit. So the same thing if you have two bit, two digits times two digit, at the most, they can have four digit. So that's the reason, even we only using the AX to AL to multiply a uh, 8-bit operand, but at most they can be 16-bit. So that's why you see uh, AL, your product will be AX. So AX times another 16-bit, they will become two 16-bit, we use a DX. So EAX times another 32-bit, they will become two 32-bit. So that's the mode instruction. So we see the example, if we have 100H times 2000, if we ask you to use the 16-bit operand, so that's why here we make this one, they both into the word value. So then we will have AX, because remember, by default, your multiple is AX for the 16-bit operand. So we have the val1 uh, moved to ax. So the ax will multiply for the val2. So 2000 times 100, you see here, your value will become 5, 0, and 2, right? So right, you can see here, the value, whole value, need to have ax and dx to hold. So that's your combined value. But sometimes, right, we know the most I need to have dx and ax to work with the product on the 16-bit 16 16-bit 16 operand. But sometimes maybe ax is good enough. So how do I know I need to include the dx or not? So that's why we need to check the carry flag. When you do the mode instruction, the carry flag actually to indicate do you need the upper half of the product or not. So if the carry flag is set, that's me. I need to combine the dx 
and AX value for the product. On the other hand, if here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 1000H, if we use the 32 bit operate, so right, so we need to use the EAX, right? So we move the value to EAX, so the EBX value is 1000. So after we multiply, you will see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 3, 0 at the end. So this value you will see, that's the product. So when we do the mode instruction, of course, they still update EDX and EAX. But here, don't you see, the EAX already have enough space to hold in the product. So right, so now here, if I really want to consider the product, the EAX is good enough. So how do I know that I don't need to include the EDX? So that's why we can check. If the carry flag is clear, so then actually our product, we don't need to consider the upper half. So that's the carry flag, how they affect the mode instruction. So during the record video, I don't go over the your turn exercise. I already have the answer here. So one thing is I don't go over that doesn't mean you don't have to go over that. Please make sure you will spend time to work on that. If your answer is not the same as the answer we show here, please write it down. So you can either post your question in the discussion or we can talk about that during our Zoom meeting. So after we finish the unsigned integer multiplication, so let's talk about the signed integer multiplication. So that's our I mode instruction. So addition to the mode, I mode instruction, actually we have three different count formats. So we will do one by one. So the first one, we have the single operand format. Then we have two operand format. So then at the end, we have three operand format. So when I'm using the IMO instruction to work on the sign integer, if I'm using the single operand format, they are similar to the mode instruction. So you still have only one operand. So this one kind of is your source operand. We call that the multiplier. So if they are 8 bits, so this value will multiply to the AL register. So then the result will be in AX. So the same thing, they can be either register or memory operand. So if the IMO work on the 16-bit operand, so they will multiply to AX. So then your product will be in DX and AX. So the same thing, 32 bits, they will multiply to the EAX. But part of we need to consider EAX or e e EAX and EDX. So you will see they are very similar to the mode instruction. But we see how they will be a little different after they multiply. So we just see, for example, here I have the sign integer I want to multiply. So I have 48 times 4. I want you to try to use the A-bit operand. So the A-bit operand, right, so we need to multiply the AL, right? So that's why we have 48 in AL, so 4 in BL. So when we do the I mode, we use the BL. So you can see here, 48 times 4 in the decimal life, they are 192, right? So you can see actually, So 192, actually, if you convert to the hexadecimal, they will become C0. So right, you will see here, after we multiply, right, then the carry, the overflow flag is set. What does carry flag and overflow flag is set mean? So actually, when we do the I mode, on earlier mode instruction, we only affect the carry flag. 
But when we have I mode, we are work on the sign integer. So both overflow flag and the carry flag stat. So then here, no matter which one, as long as your overflow and carry flag stat, what does that mean? Like earlier, right? If the carry flag stat for the mode instruction, we cannot just using the lower byte for the multiplication result. We should consider the whole thing. So that's why here, when you use the I mode, if the overflow flag is set, you need to consider value including the AH and AL. Why? Did you see here? If I only consider AL, C0 actually is what? C0, if we only see C0 stand alone, then it is positive number or negative number. Right, they become negative number, right? So that's why you see here, your overflow is set. That means the higher bit operand is not just the signs. It's not just the sign extension. There really is the sign we need to consider. So that's why when you do the IMO instruction, when you have carry flag or overflow flag is set, the upper half you cannot ignore. You should always including your value is including the upper half and the lower half. The reason is there job here is not only for the sign extension they really show is the sign okay so we see here if this one can help you to understand more you see the same thing we try to multiply 48 and the 4 but we are in the 60 bit 16 bit operand so that's why we need to use ax right so then we move 48 to ax 4 to bx so after you multiply to the bx, our result should be in dx and ax, right? But our ax is here. So then you will see in the 16-bit environment, a uh, 16-bit operand, actually our overflow flag is clear. When you mean clear, that means my upper operand I can ignore. Because 0, 0, C0 is good enough to show me they are positive 192. So that's the IMO instruction. So continue, IMO instruction actually we have two operand format. So when you're using the two operand format, that means your product actually will save in the first operand. And the first operand has to be registered. Then your second operand can be either registered or memory operand. They also can be an immediate value. But one thing is you can see if they are immediate value or they are registered or memory operand, they need to be the same size. So you see the 16 bit times 16 bit. But at the end, our value will only save in the 16 bit. So that's why you see here in the 32 bit, uh, in the two operand format, possibly your value will not enough to hold. So that's why the two operand, if your overflow flag or carry flag set, that's mean your value actually being truncated. Uh, so we see the example. Like here, I have negative 32,000 times 2. If I using the 16-bit operand, so then we have the value in the AX. So when you use the IMO for the two operand, they actually only using the first operand as the destination operand. So 2 times AX, they will update the value in AX. So you can see here, 2 times negative 32, Right, actually, they doesn't have enough to carry over because they will become one zero six zero zero. So that's why since they only update AX, so the carry flag flag and the overflow flag sets, 
that means your AX value actually is not correct. It's strong. 